Hey, uh, Dan from danwagner.co with a quick tutorial on inserting new rows based on cell values with VBA. I saw a question about this particular job on a forum and so I copied the example exactly. And so don't get too tripped up on the rules and the sheet set up here. I think the important takeaway is understanding that when it comes to inserting rows, deleting rows, doing anything that's going to change the row indices of your, your data in the worksheet, the big, big takeaway is to work backwards. Start from the bottom and head back up to the top rather than starting from the top and working your way down. Because the important thing is that you maintain the indices and only affect indices and data that has already been through the through the logic so to speak so this particular question had a handful of rules about how to insert a new row based on some logic based on values in a certain column you can read all about that in the linked tutorial in the description of this video but like I said I'm gonna focus mostly on how the code works at a high level and talk about the overarching strategy. So with that, let's, uh, let's get into it. First and foremost, we start with uh, setup and exploration here. And as far as exploration is concerned, there really isn't a whole mess of work to do. So essentially, these are all done in one step. I am assigning these values to no undoubtedly which one is the student column, which one is the item column, which one is the net amount column, etc. I assign sheet one to be a worksheet data variable inside this macro to make it easy to refer to values inside the sheet. And then I leverage this handy last occupied row number from the VBA tool belt to identify the last occupied row. If you're interested in getting your hands on the VBA tool belt, which I would highly recommend, you can find links to it, again, inside the article that's in the description of this video. So let's move on to the execution, which essentially happens in two phases. The first phase here is where we work our way back from the bottom of the data, row six, on up to the first entry of the data, which is on row two. And we do that by starting on the last row and incrementing the counter variable, which is long index, down, right? We increment it by minus one or decrement it. And so by doing this, we can be sure that we're not going to get our indices jumbled up as we add or remove rows here. And the way that we do this in this situation is actually adding the row numbers where the rule is satisfied for adding a new row. And we'll talk about that a little bit more once we kick off the script and see how it operates. The second phase of the execution step happens down here as we loop through the collection that we created in phase one. This collection has a reference to each row number where we need to insert a row. So we add a row, and then we apply our logic and write some values out each, uh, each time we add a new row to the worksheet. So what I'm going to do here is drop some breakpoints in to make it easy to identify and explain what's happening here. Uh, and I'll throw breakpoints down at the bottom in phase two as well. So let's, uh, let's get after it. All right, cool. So the big takeaway as far as identifying when we need to insert a new row is when the net amount is greater than zero. So we should insert a new row uh, after row six, after row four, and after row three. And we can see the first time we stopped was indeed on row six. Again, on row four, which is great, we're meeting our rules. And finally, on row three. Awesome. So now we have a collection where each entry in the collection is a row 
that needs to have a row inserted immediately after it. So when I click play again and make my way down to phase two, you can see for each entry inside this collection, we insert a row and then apply our logic through and through. So the first time we're going to do this, we're on row six and inserting a row down there isn't going to show us anything special. So I'm going to get rid of these breakpoints and move through this one quickly. You can see that we did add a new row. It's got the same student and item number per the spec in the problem. The new amount is equal to the net amount, again, from the original problem statement. And instead of a Y in the reversal column, we have an N. And so this time, when we apply this logic, you should see the row get created and all of the already existing data get shifted down from row five on, on down. So let's verify that. Sweet. So now we're going to apply this logic and populate the new row five. And you can imagine if we were looping forwards in a situation like this, we would be getting into trouble, right? Because our indices would now be off. And finally, our last row number where we need an insert is on row three. So you should see everything from row four down shift once again. Killer. And finally, the last step in this macro is to let the user know that we're done with a neat little message box that says finished. Sweet. And so with that, we have inserted rows without running into any index struggles. So remember, the major takeaway here is that when it comes to inserting, or for that matter, deleting rows, anything where you're going to change how the data aligns with your row indices, you want to make sure that you start from the bottom and work your way up. Thanks so much.